Hello everyone, Just Corn here, and welcome back to the Oceanium of Blydorp. We are moving into the island section, still joined by Leaf once again. Hello! And here we have the cow nose ray. Beautiful. I absolutely... <laughs> admittedly, I barely see cow nose rays not in a touch tank setting, so this is kind of refreshing for me. There's actually a sign here saying that you shouldn't touch them because of their their stingers. <laughs> oh. Which surprised me. Like, when I heard about Kaunos Ray touch tanks, I was like, wait, you can you can touch them? Is that safe? They remove the stingers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> so... Oh, well. It's actually Th kind of more ethical this way than I, I suppose. Yeah. Cause... This is a gorgeous tank. I just want to start off right away. Yeah. Um, those are lookdowns. I'm not sure if those are specifically Threadfin lookdowns. I don't think they are. Mm. But... Looking at that mix, it's just so beautiful. Just two very seemingly kind of basic species, but both of them just create such a beautiful tank, kind yeah. of like family together. I had a little quick shot there of an employee cleaning the tank in their wetsuit. You know, get your wetsuits. Uh, I love that. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't want to like full on record them, so I just took a quick peek, but That's I thought fine. it was quite fun to see. And uh, yeah, here we go to the, um, the mangrove tank basically mm -hmm. we have this little fake snake over there of um, course that's something i've noticed at pretty much every single aquarium is that they have a <laughs> fake snake somewhere i feel like it's just synonymous with them it's just one of the staples you know no i guess gotta so. have it. just like uh treasure chest donation boxes <laughs> stop <laughs> that's adorable yeah. is this outdoors no, no, we are still indoors. Completely. That is insane. It feels like it's outside. Yeah, no, it is like a complete greenhouse now that we're in. So nice. there is a lot of natural light in here. Um, but yeah, we are still indoors. The entire building is uh, is indoors. And over there, you this can is see incredible. where you can return the search card. We'll see it in a second. But yeah, this is where the Oceanium really mixes things up. And we get mm -hmm. like the, the mangrove. Like it's still aquarium with like the mangrove tank and stuff. But up, up across from here... There's actually an iguana enclosure um, nice. up there. We can see the uh, zebra moray as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, we got like the surgeon fish. Just oh, the stingray right over there. Just a really solid mix in here. Is it yeah. just a green iguana? Uh, no, no, no. Actually, no. <laughs> it's something much more exciting. Actually, the zoo has green iguana, but I actually can't remember where. <laughs> We're, they're we'll not in the Oceanium. I yeah. love I love the little zebra more. Look at his face. It's adorable. Yeah. It actually came out there, which was so fun to see. But yeah, mm. here here says there's a bunch of uh, education about mangroves. What are they? Uh, why are they so important? Um, actually, this entire uh, area that we're now in, the, the islands area, um, has recently been rethemed a little bit into right. like, proper islands. And the main, like catch or the, the like the takeaway now uh, oh yeah by the way lesser antillian oh no wait no, 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 fuck now i spoiled it <laughs> this is the rhinoceros iguana um, <laughs> and now i have spoiled that we are going to see it's lesser fine antillian it's fine i moment. already forgot what you said <laughs> but um yeah the 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 idea of this area now is that it's all about how uh, because of the dutch colonies which are still part of the like uh, the Dutch Kingdom or mm -hmm. whatever um, yay colonism um, <laughs> or colonialism I should say um, it's, it's the signs are like hey Newton Newton Netherlands mangroves Newton the Netherlands uh, uh, clouded forests and That's stuff so like that funny. so it's like hey yeah well, we have as these... funny as colonialism can be I, I <laughs> as long as they're having fun with that. Yeah, so I think it's kind of kind of a fun take of like, yeah, yeah, we have we actually have these biomes in the Netherlands, just not in our own country. <laughs> it's just on the other side of the planet. Uh, but yeah, this is where you can return the search card, and yeah, surprisingly, nice. it was actually full, and it was actually difficult to fit it in there. So oh my, that is uh, where you can find them. But yeah. Um, again, uh, as we saw in the last episode, some amazing uh, miniatures and dioramas we'll see now. So here's uh, a very staple kind of playground for zoos with the turtles that you can crawl into. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not what we're here to see. We're here to see this. 
this just uh, absolutely more dioramas. Awesome thing, all about how uh, sea turtles are um, being born and mm -hmm. the struggles that they have to overcome. So here you can see the eggs being laid, then uh, buried, and they're hatching. Um, I think that that's just expanding foam that they use for this, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they dig themselves out. They have to come overcome all of these dangers, like crabs and gulls, and, and eventually they'll make it to the ocean. Yeah. So yeah, super, super cute. And um, also, while we were walking next to the race uh, earlier, we saw a little hole in the wall. And uh, mm -hmm. that's actually a little shortcut, which ends up right over here. Really? So that's a, a fun little way to lose your children, you know? That's, that's adorable. <laughs> um, and when I was standing over here, I actually noticed something. Like, back here, I actually saw another exhibit, which is... Uh, not accessible for guests so i wonder oh really what that is i don't know if it's like an older exhibit that you used to be able to get to or, or what this is but yeah it's this little backstage area now so yeah here you can see the the greenhouse in its full glory and okay that is just way too beautiful <laughs> like i would not have expected something like this out of an aquarium yeah, but exactly. It, it just works so well. Oh yeah. my gosh. It flows super naturally, and it mm -hmm. is absolutely beautiful. And you've got this little dining area over here, which is like right at the halfway point, so it's kind yep. of perfect. And, and it's perfectly Caribbean themed too, which is just yeah. icing on the cake. Yep. And yeah, now um, the odd things for... Well, actually, I, I've heard of multiple aquariums that have some... Some like primates or other random Yeah, come stuff. visit America. We got some weird aquariums. <laughs> but here we have the cotton top tamarind. That's nice. It's, uh, kind of vibing out here. Are they found on islands? I don't Maybe. think they are, right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick little Google search. Either way, that's a beautiful, beautiful habitat for them. Yeah, just a lovely little like, exhibit space. And then here we have the lesser Antillian iguana. So this is right. actually a, a really rare, uh, well, really rare, I don't know, relatively rare species of iguana, mm -hmm. uh, which is really, really cool. They actually have two separate enclosures for them. I'm guessing that they split up the the male and the female. Um, Probably for, yeah. Yeah, it um, like breeding. I just love that, though. Like, it's whenever you see a rare planet zoo animal in real life, that's always <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Oh my God. I can't believe they actually exist. <laughs> and then here uh, is one of my favorite lizards, uh, the Jesus Christ lizard. <gasps> yes. Also known as the uh, green basilisk. I'm surprised they don't have any water in there. Or, or at least none basilisk. that I can see. Yeah, it's uh, and, and also they also share their exhibit, by the way, with the uh, giant ditch frog. Which... The giant ditch frog? Yep. I didn't see it though. I've never That's actually a seen it. Hell of a name. <laughs> Are these a Cuban goishas? I'm not even going to try and pronounce that right. <laughs> Hudias? Because, uh, yeah, I don't know either. I think it's Hudia or something. Hudia. Um, yeah. What I thought was funny here is you can actually kind of make out the backstage door over there as well. Kind of hidden, kind of integrated. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is just a lovely little enclosure as well. Nice. Really, really awesome species too. They're just a. Very rare in the United States. I don't think we actually have any holders. Um, but still, just a really cool island rodent. Yeah. Really cool and markings, just the too. planting over here as well. Like, I, I haven't actually mentioned this, but uh, Blydorp is also a botanical garden, officially. Of course. Like, they're part of the National Plant Register. Um, so you will see, like, pretty rare plants and nice. just signage for the plants all over the place. That uh, is a beautiful, beautiful tank. Yes. So there's two tanks over here. They kind of swap the species between the two, I feel like. Because sometimes you'll find like the arowana in one tank, and sometimes you'll find them in the other. <clears throat> but, yeah. Lovely little waterfall. And then nice. here we also have the Cuvier's uh, dwarf caiman. Which nice. is always, always sitting in that corner <laughs> over there. <laughs> Just exclusively. Sometimes he's a bit more in the water, but he's pretty much always on that side. That's so funny. I think it's really funny. And yeah, I love the, the thatch roofing that we see over here, by the way. It's incredible. All over the place. It really, I feel like that's what got you 
Yes. Being like, is this outside or not? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, then boy. um, over here we have some like more emptier hallways. You can see. I feel like that's something that people sometimes struggle with is like having these big empty spaces. Mm -hmm. But that's something that you have because you need to have like capacity for a lot of people. So you might have some like bits of theming on the side, but you're definitely going to have like these more open hallways. Also no, over here, that, yeah, we have a little peek into the backstage because I think that's it's super, so super cool. cool. And then, yeah, there's a bunch of like theming and education about all sorts of things. For some reason, uh, I, I they really care a lot about the sturgeon because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they throw it at us again over here about like this is awesome wooden sculpture of a sturgeon and, and some yeah. more education about them but yeah just really cool no super cool theming especially in like that kind of in between area yeah like just if you can throw education somewhere you probably should like it's just yeah. super easy just to be able to teach people yeah, and this Even area for me was animals. so inspiring because in my own aquarium in Planet Zoo, I had a, I have a couple of spaces where I don't really know what to do with like the walls or something, mm -hmm. and this stuff is just perfect. So I'd definitely be no, copying of course, some yeah. of this. So here's something about like the plastic soup, and we also get a little backstage peek to the outside. <gasps> yes. So this is the employee parking lot and some other stuff. You can actually see the train tracks in the background. Mm -hmm. um, I love when I when I was still was still working in Amsterdam. I would take the train and go by Blyderp every time, and it was always just staring out the window, like I can see the zoo. <laughs> this is so much fun. But uh, yeah, the train track is actually what separates the old and the new part of the zoo. Mm -hmm. so. Does it anyway, go over or under it? Under. Nice. So over here again, just the amazing things that the zoo is doing with the beamers to immerse you. Mm -hmm. into this icy landscape also Man, safety helps so cool. <laughs> but yeah this is the uh i guess the the beamer mural gave it away <laughs> this is the penguin uh room so we've got nice. uh, the king penguin as well as i didn't write it down crap uh, a different i think gentu Ooh. I think there's a, there is I a think that's Gen second. 2, yeah. They have, like, the eye markings from what yeah. I can see. That's a beautiful penguin exhibit, too. Yeah, it's a little bit dated. Like, uh, you can definitely yeah. tell. Like, it's showing its age, especially all the... Uh, I feel like especially the snow. <laughs> you can tell it's, yeah. it's a bit old, but... Oh, look at them. That's an after, incredible shot right there. After the luck that I had with the shark feeding... The mm -hmm. moment I stepped into this room, the penguins were also getting fed. <laughs> you, and this is like, what happened. I gotta go to the zoo with you sometime, because <laughs> it seems like you bring the good luck with you wherever you go. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is just amazing to see. Because yeah, like, you will see them swimming around every now and then. Mm -hmm. But during a feeding like this, it turns into a frenzy. So it's just absolutely amazing. I love that, though. Like, I also love how the king penguins really don't care too much. <laughs> yeah, they're like, just... all the gentoo penguins are freaking out. The, the king penguins are just on the land part being like, yeah, they'll, he'll get to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there they go. See, this is why. If you wouldn't do this, then they would freak out more. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's... Um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh yeah, we have... Um, one of many photo booths over here. Adorable. Um, at the zoo, there's a couple like these. There's also a few that have like a green screen thing, which are more recent. Uh, but yeah, we have... Oh yeah, what I was saying earlier more was under... uh, mm -hmm. that uh, this was one of the first times I've actually seen penguins like torpedoing like they do. Really? Which was just uh, super cool. Also, once again, um, this is something we'll see a bunch... Um, as well as these like statues with also a brill plate next to it. Oh, mm -hmm. seizure warning. Jeez. Yeah. Cameras and uh -oh. beamers don't get along all the time. But this is also really cool. Just this I feel like it kind of dynamically reacts to where you step and like. It looks like it did with like because I was looking at that on like one of the other shots when the kids were jumping on it. Yeah. It looks like it did. So it's still really cool. 
It's definitely What trying. is that view? Yeah, just another little view of the land part. And you can That's actually awesome. see all of the lights <laughs> blasting the penguins. <clears throat> That's something I've noticed so much about penguin exhibits, too. It's like... Yeah. It's that weird, uncanny valley. Like, I don't know if you've ever watched um, Happy Feet, mm -hmm. but when the penguin gets taken to the aquarium, yeah. and it just feels so alien, Yeah, that's always that's... what I think about whenever I and see... I've only seen one person capture that well in Planet Zoo so far, and that's Vihoha. Of course, <clears throat> yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, over here, this is the um, entrance to the lemur area. Um, nice. which is a beautiful walkthrough exhibit. However, since COVID, it has been closed. And they've actually completely boarded it up now. So no. I'm not sure what their plans with this area are, because it looks so cool. Like, look at all the faux, like, uh, baobab trees, and oh, there's so much cool stuff. But, right. yeah, it's no longer accessible. <clears throat> That's something I want to do for, like, the longest time is a walkthrough lemur exhibit. Because I, yeah. I have never been to a zoo this with that. Is, My girlfriend is, has, man. ironically enough. But <laughs> not me. Wow. Yeah, is it less common in America? Because in Europe it's like... It therapy. is. I don't think it... I don't think there's a single damn zoo in America that has walkthrough lemurs. She did it at um, the Rabat Zoo in Morocco. Hmm. Yes. Very crazy. And, anyway, this hallway over here is... It's I'm going to say this about every theming bit in the zoo, but this is yeah. one of my favorite theming parts. It's fine, no. Because we have, have the, the Galapagos favorites. giant tortoise, and of course, um, what fits to that, uh, the HMS Beagle, uh, Darwin's journey around yes. the globe. This hallway is themed after that, after the boat. <laughs> I so love that. As we walk through this, like, just look at this. This is the coolest freaking thing. Yeah, but like, just being able to see dynamic theming like this is just really incredible. Yes. It's and just so cool. You know, there's education about the theory of evolution mm -hmm. and not about creationism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, just the, the, the fact that from the boat you have a view to the Galapagos uh, exhibit. This is the outdoor part. Oh, which, man. In the winter, of course, they wouldn't be in. But super, super cool. I'm surprised by how green the grass is in the winter. Yeah, actually, I am too. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's it's probably mostly moss and not grass. I'm sure. <laughs> that's how, how most fields are in the Netherlands. Like, yeah, the stuff in the front is definitely not grass. Oh, yeah. Uh, we also have that is an emergency so... exit. I'm just so amazed by, like, the ship theming. Because even at Roger Williams, I'm, I'm going to bring up my hometown again, we have the Marco Polo Trail, where, you know, Marco Polo probably sailed on a ship for a little bit, mm. and it's just one room, and it's like, oh man, you can't do more with that, and it doesn't even have any <laughs> damn animals in it. Uh -huh. So just seeing this, it's like, oh man, I'm so jealous. Yeah. So um, now we are moving to... A really cool area as well. So in the mm -hmm. Oceanium, we have this lab area uh, that was all about fish. This is kind of similar to that, but it's all about uh, reptiles and that sort of thing. So nice. I think like this is actually mostly like their breeding and separation areas. Um, but the fact that they opened that up to the public is just super, super cool. So a lot of these are empty right now, but you often see things like... Uh, uh, Pancake tortoises, long neck turtles. Um, these free tanks on the on the side that we're looking at now is actually a bunch of like rarer, uh, endangered animals. Uh, okay. The thing we just saw was the Lake Patscuero salamander. Nice. I uh, definitely messed that up right there. <laughs> and yeah, we have uh, fish, I don't know, <laughs> I didn't write it down, uh, and the, and the titi, uh, titi caca frogs over here. Nice. Beautiful name. Um, but yeah, we saw like Herman's tortoises, these are uh, San Francisco garter snakes, there's uh, giant leaf insects, uh, millipedes, just so much stuff. It's, and it, it changes all the time as they like uh, ship these animals out to other zoos or put them That's in enclosures. Awesome, so there's always something new to see here, which is just super, super cool. I love that. 
And especially such a large focus on, like, smaller animals, too. That's always so good to see. Yep. And then once again, this room is always populated by some volunteers as well that are able to, uh, well, keep an eye on people that they don't do stupid yeah. stuff. But also talk about all of these amazing props that are on here. Like, we've got a collar for red pandas, which was actually something that was developed and tested here at Rotterdam Zoo, which is being used out in the world now to track red panda uh, populations. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see a elephant trunk, a polar bear feet, uh, like insides of a Komodo dragon. Also, just this little detail of the, <laughs> the tree trunk in the middle of the table. <laughs> uh, it's so much cool stuff. Yeah, and here we have our, our long neck turtle. Nice. Also, so, and now we're going to go all the way around all of these enclosures. So, starting over here at the exit, uh, we have the um, plowshare tortoise, the colored iguana, and the common spider tortoise. Uh, the spider tortoise is actually normally in a different enclosure, um, but mm -hmm. that one we'll see in a bit is actually occupied by something else right now. I won't spoil what yet. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, they just temporarily like sectioned off part of this enclosure to put him in there. And then over here is like breeders and stuff like that. So incubators, I should say. Um, they're currently not incubating anything, as can be seen on the empty whiteboard. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just so cool That's to see all of this stuff. Really, really cool. I love the clinical aspect of like these kinds of sections because I don't know, like. It just feels like you're walking through a lab, which I guess you kind of are, but it just helps you feel like, oh man, I'm seeing what real research looks like, which yeah. sometimes, like the gaudiness of zoos kind of gets to the point where it's like a kind of Disneyland version of, oh, we do research here totally, but this just helps you feel like that. Yeah, this know. shows it and it kind of validates that message, especially yes. stuff like this, which there's a whole sign back there explaining what they're doing here. This is X C2 conservation of the uh, fire salamander. So mm -hmm. they're actually successfully breeding this endangered species here and they're showing that very proudly. Like, hey, some some new ones got born. You can see over there is a little juvenile one. Um, Hell yeah. And there's just a bunch of terrariums here for the fire salamander. Look there he at is. Him. This is actually something that uh, Chaya Zoo, uh, I really hope to be making a video about that one at some point as well. Um, also has a room like this, but then like to the max, they've got like ten times the amount of variants. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's super cool to see stuff like this. And uh, yeah, some of these animals were in winter rest, so that's why the lights are turned off. Mm -hmm. um, but you can actually still see them. Like this is the the Gila monster, and it was just sitting nice. right there. So really beautiful exhibit for them. Yeah, yeah, just. All of the exhibits here are just absolutely top-notch. Yeah. So inspiring. This is crazy as well. There's like this giant TV, which is touchscreen actually. And you mm -hmm. can click like different animals to learn about the conservation projects that uh, the zoo is contributing to. This is so, so cool. Yeah. Then we also have a little bird enclosure over here. I feel like there used to be something else in here, especially since you can see like the, the glass panel is like split in two. Yeah. But the top part is also glass, which actually I didn't notice. I bonked into it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel like it, it didn't used to be. Uh, I feel like it used to be open and there used to be some sort of reptile in there probably. But I'm sure, yeah. It's just some, some birds. We've got like the, over there, what we can see running around is the uh, crested partridge. Which is a, nice. a lovely little bird. In Dutch, they are called Rul Rul. <laughs> Incredible. I'm not even going to try and pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, I, I thought you but I love that. <laughs> and over here, we have the Colorado River Toad. Nice. Which has a lovely little thing. I, I love actually that. love how well the painted backgrounds kind of blend into the yeah, exhibit right? here as well. We went to a um, kind of like eco museum the other day. And um, their taxidermy section, you could tell they made, like, the taxidermy things first and then painted the background oh. right after that just so it helped blend it together a lot more. It was just That's so cool to see. Yeah, but here as well, it's just the ocean background. Oh, man. And, yeah, here we once again have the Antillian uh, iguana. 
And I love sort of, when they do that. <laughs> the little head thing. Well, sort of wall behind us had like a ton of information about these guys and why they're right. endangered and what they're doing to help. Also, these um, posters on here were also and like the, the posters plastered over the glass were added in the past mm-hmm. year. But yeah, this over here is the enclosure that uh, would normally have that uh, spider tortoise. But we can see it has Komodo dragon in there. That's now you might be wondering, why is there a Komodo dragon in a tiny tortoise enclosure? Psst. Well, it's because it's a juvenile. Nice. And the juveniles need to be separated from their parents. And juvenile Komodo dragons actually love sitting up in trees to like kind of hide mm-hmm. away and protect themselves before they're, you know, the grown up monster lizards that they become. So Hell that's yeah. why this uh, smaller enclosure is used for them over here. And uh, no, we can actually I see. love that. Over at Bronx, we have um, obviously we have like the big Komodo dragon enclosure in the elephant house, uh, and like a big boy lives in there. But <laughs> you go into the reptile house, and then you just see the baby like just chilling on a tree, and it's like, oh my god, they're so small when they're babies. So I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I give up. <laughs> So this is the Madagascar tank, and I actually love that they have, like, this entire baobab background, and it's oh just for this God. tank. Like, it's the entire I forgot we were, wall, but... I forgot we were in an aquarium. <laughs> yeah, so, right back in your face, as we leave the Oceanium, we're almost done here. The last room is the uh, kelp forests section. Mm-hmm. So we got a couple more smaller tanks. This one seems to be empty, but this is the main yes. attraction here. It's the leopard shark tank. Nice. With, uh, of course, some beautiful kelp over here. To be honest, this tank is probably usually a little underwhelming. It's a little empty feeling. Yeah. But they could it, throw in some like Garibaldi in there or something. I don't know. Yeah, it Just does have some color. some nice rock work. I think it's the the, the slimness of it that kind of mm-hmm. makes it a little a little bit less. But this is super cool. These things are disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I think I did I cut that? No, yeah, okay, I do. Yeah. So you zoom in on it and you just see their little like tentacle things. Oh, like. I love that. <laughs> uh Stuff of nightmares. <laughs> You're welcome. I love... N- have you ever held a sea star and felt I, its, like, little feet kind of crawling I over you? Don't think I have. No, I can't say I have. You, I, I have to recommend it. It feels very fun. I, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> but if I ever get the chance, I guess I'll give it a try. Perfect. But yeah. Um, one thing that we actually haven't seen a lot of in this aquarium, which will... Uh, which is kind of a staple, is like these bubble um, viewing points. Mm -hmm. Um, But the leper shark tank uh, does have one of those, which we'll see in a second. But yeah, just look at these. These are really cool sharks, I will say They really are. And like, they have this cool little thing with their skin. There's a Garibaldi. Um, (laughs) But uh, no, they have such like a really cool contrast when they're in the light directly. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it just works so well for tanks like that. Yeah. So this section, uh, which we'll get to in a second after we look through the little ball, ball yes. thing. Um, but that section we saw was uh, zoo much plastic, <laughs> which um, is a little pun. I've tried to translate it to the best of my ability. <laughs> um, but of course, it's all about the plastic soup and uh, yes. how, how big of a problem that is. So let's have a little look over there because there's some really, really cool little... Um, fun little educational designs in there that I'm a huge fan of. So yeah, um, in Dutch this is uh, zo veel plastic, uh, and then the pun like zo is so, so it's so much plastic. But oh my god, zo much plastic also works. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my favorite part of this. It's uh, swallow or choke is what it translates to, and on the left we have jellyfish and on the right nice. we have plastic bags so this that shows is so clever this shows like for a sea turtle a plastic bag looks just like one of its main sources of food so mm-hmm. i think that's such a cool way to actually like visualize that problem it so really so well is. and yeah over here we just have all sorts of plastic things that end up in the ocean and what 
sucks so much. Straws are the worst. <laughs> Just, yeah. I mean, I feel like everyone knows the video of the sea turtle at this point. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it just shows the item and behind it, it shows a picture of that item in the ocean, which is kind of sad. It's sad, but that's like, it's powerful just to be mm -hmm. able to see that. It's cool. Yeah. So, um, you can walk outside through this area, but I don't want to miss the last two tanks. So let's have a mm -hmm. quick look over here. Uh, because a couple more sea stars uh, and then we get the American Lobster. Which, yes. Uh, this zoo has the single coolest American lobster you will ever see. All right. And I can guarantee me. it because it is a two egged oneling. So it's not a twin, it's a twin. Okay. It is a twin sea, uh, uh, lobster that merged back together. And it was two different colors of lobster. So when it merged together, it got this split exactly down the middle of its two colors. That is insane. It is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I love him. And he's completely natural. Like, that is just a thing that can happen in nature. And mm -hmm. Zoom must be so proud of it. Yeah, <laughs> I know back at my university, we had, like, a really cool marine bio lab. So we had, like, yellow American lobsters. We had, like, bright blue ones. But... I can't remember if we ever had an individual like that, so that's just really awesome to see. Yeah. And yeah, as we uh, end up over here, we're back at the sea lion enclosure, so you can have <gasps> nice. another another view into it from the inside of the aquarium as well. That's yeah, perfect. The theming over here once again, just the, the pier mm -hmm. stuff. A random dolphin hanging from the ceiling. And <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, is that another sturgeon on our left? And uh, I feel like that's a whale shark, actually. But okay. for some reason, I'm not looking at it. So we'll never no know. No worries. <laughs> so, yeah, this is where we will leave the uh, Oceanium. There's a couple more things to look at. Like, oh, apparently this education over here. Yes. Um, and yeah, you can walk it backwards. So there is also signage on this, sign, uh, this side. But why would you? It's, <laughs> it's, very, it's very deliberately made to be walked in the way that you do and actually it does a really good job at kind of directing guests throughout here like this is one of the few uh, areas in a zoo where i rarely encounter like people going the wrong way which is that's, that's a good feat. To see. that's a feat so over here this is actually the um old sea otter enclosure and uh, the zoo doesn't okay. have sea otters anymore sadly so um, sad and now it's just used as a separation area for the sea lions. So I think nice. this is a male that was probably uh, causing trouble with the other male. Mm. So that's probably why it's out here. But yeah, it looks a little sad because in the yeah. enclosure it's not, not a great size for them. But it's it's a temporary thing, I think. So. All right, that's good at least. But yeah, that is the Oceanium. That was All gorgeous. Yeah. In the next episode, um, well, we would be going to America and the gift shop and stuff, which is what we're very nicely transitioning towards, but we're actually going to make a quick pit stop because I have some backstage footage that I really want to share with you guys. So in the next episode, we're going to go backstage into the Oceanium. It'll just be a short little bonus video. Highly recommend it if you're into that kind of stuff because it is super, super interesting. So we'll see you guys then. And uh, yeah, bye-bye. Peace out.